school, just barely 18 years old, I ran away to Europe, decided I wanted to be a chef. I learned cooking from my grandfather, which was an Alabama guy, and my mom, Alabama girl. I, and I wanted to perfect that and do things that were a little different, like what I saw on TV or what I saw in the magazines. And after school there, my first job was in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is now a big culinary hub, but at the time not so much, mostly just gambling and drinking. Worked at a French restaurant now there that's been now bulldozed for Fashion Show Mall. Uh, then, then after that, I decided to move back to Atlanta worked in an area called Buckhead, which is known for its famous restaurants. On TC, we're going to do a boneless pork loin, asparagus, a salad, and a fantastic... The Smithfield pork loin for this, part, this particular dish because I like the consistency of it, uh, the availability of it. It's always the same. The recipe turns out the same every time, whether it's on the grill, or in the oven. Pork loins always have one end that's a little larger than the other, and I always trim off all of this fat. This is the same product when you buy boneless pork chops that you're buying. It's just sliced and even increments in between the ribs. If you, if you buy a bone-in pork chop, you're actually getting the same cut, but with the bone attached. What we're going to do is actually cut this in half, because we can make two really nice roasts with this. And then we're going to stuff it with uh, Portuguese sausage, and then we're going to put it in the oven or on the grill. We'll make it both ways for you today, so you can have rainy weather cooking in your oven, or sunny southern weather out on your grill. My favorite knife, so it's good to have a big knife. This is easily enough for six people once it's First, trimming the, the fat off is pretty easy to do. If you just get your knife up underneath it, and you go in one direction, and you cut. If you do it little, in little, little increments, you'll get a, not a pretty finishing product. So, I just cut it in long strips and remove it. And then you can see the pretty nice lean meat underneath. If you leave this on, it has a tough chew in your mouth, and then your spices cannot penetrate it. It's very similar to any, any other pork product where you trim off the silver skin of beef. It's basically the same. Comes off clean and easy. This has no, no culinary use at all. It's not good for stock or anything like that. It's not very flavorful. It's just fat and tough. Again, long, even strokes, take it off for when you get finished with your pork loin. You have a nice, symmetrical look. A big knife, I find, is easier than a small knife, or you can use a boning knife, if you're more familiar with that. It looks like this. Some people work better with a smaller knife. It's always important to have a good edge on your knife you get good, nice, smooth, even cuts. If your knife is not sharp, you'll end up hacking away at the meat. And it's all about presentation. People eat with their eyes first. So if it looks beautiful, it tastes beautiful. So I'm going to continue trimming this up. And again, this is just waste. There's nothing else that you can use it for. I'm all about if there's a, a trimming that I can use for stock or for, for another dish, I always will save it. But unfortunately, this doesn't have any other use. So once you get the trimmed up, you can see that you got a really pretty 
lean piece of meat. And then I decided I want to own my own restaurant. I went to Florida, sought out some areas, visited, visited some cities, and then decided on Tampa, which was where my family vacationed when I was a little girl, and I loved it. That's the, I had positive memories there, so I did my demographic studies and opened a carry-out catering, which was kind of new at the time in the early 90s, and it developed into a full-service restaurant where we did three meals a day. I sold that after 10 years and moved back to Atlanta, where I worked in the area called Buckhead and worked with some pretty famous restaurants at the time in Atlanta. I enjoyed that. Two seating formal French restaurants where I started actually working for free. Really hard. Anyway, after that, they back paid me for my month. I worked there for free and put me on the line where I worked there until the restaurant. First contest where I worked, cooked in backyard, I won all four categories. Won a little bit of money and got the taste of victory and now I've decided to combine my culinary background from Europe and restaurant industry with my love of barbecue and my roots. So today, we're going to do that today. We're going to take some French recipes, some Portuguese recipes, and some Cajun recipes and do it on the grill. Now that you've trimmed your pork loin, taken off all the skin, and made it look beautiful like this, tonight I'm just going to cook for four people. I have a trick of the trade for two items here. One is the sausage that you use. This particular recipe, I'm using a mild Portuguese sausage uh, that you can buy in most grocery stores. Whatever region you're in, feel free to use any sausage that's available to you. But the trick of this is, is I freeze my sausage first. And it makes it a lot easier when you want to stuff it into the pork loin. The other thing is, a lot of people have knife steels that they've wore out, or you can pick one up for inexpensive to use for this particular reason. I will take my old knife steel and actually poke a hole straight through the pork loin, and that way the frozen sausage will slide through it very easily without tearing up the meat. Again, for the presentation at the end, so it looks very pretty. So you're just going to pick out where you want to insert it. I don't often do it in the very middle because it looks very strange on the plate when you slice it to have an eye in the middle looking at you. So I always do it a little bit off center. And when I put the sauce on it, it looks beautiful with the sauce on the other side. So simply I'm going to pick the largest end and I'm going to stick straight. You can use sausage with casing or without casing for this dish. Either way, it doesn't matter. If your preference is without casing, it's easier to remove when it's frozen also. Basically, you're just going to cut a slit on it, slit in it, and peel it off. If you want to take the casing off when it's frozen, you can easily peel it right off. I personally don't mind the casing in this dish because the way it's served, but I wanted you to have an example. I'm going to trim it down. Now you're ready to stuff the sausage inside and it slides in. Pretty easy. If it sticks out of each side or if the piece of meat is bigger, just simply stuff another sausage in until it meets. I like to leave mine because sausage does shrink some. I like to leave it exposed on the end and it just helps to baste it. And when it shrinks, it normally comes out 
even. If it doesn't, trim it off before serving. Thus, again, presentation is everything. The next thing to do after you've stuffed it with your sausage is I coat it with a little bit of olive oil. Rub it down lightly because on the grill this way you won't have to oil your grates or when you put it in the oven you don't have to oil your pan. So just a light coat. Then I'm going to wash my hands. I use a degreaser soap always because uh, that way I know I don't have oily hands when I reach into my salt and pepper well. After it's oiled, I'm going to salt and I like to use kosher flaked salt. And for this I use a fine grain pepper. Because I'm in the main end of the presentation, I don't want to see black flakes in it because we're going to do a pear sauce. And the black flakes will not make a pretty presentation. Now that we've trimmed our pork loin, we'll peel the pears and move on to the next step. Mm -hmm. When I make my green goddess dressing, I prefer breakstone sour cream. If it comes in a light or a regular, I think it has the creamiest texture and the smoothest feel on your mouth. Breakstone, the sour creamier sour cream your other food loves. For the pork stuffed pork loins, we're going to do a roasted pear sauce, and any type of pear will work, whatever is from your region or available in your store. I'm going to use all three because I'm lucky being in the South, we have them available all the time. First, I'm going to peel them, and then I'm going to chop them fine. Alright, I'm going to show you an example of the pork cooked two different ways. Same recipe, one on my grill and one in my oven. I'm not exact on measurements on this, so I would just say two cups of pears 
on it on the top of each one. We're gonna do them exactly the same. We're just gonna cook them in two different manners. And then I had chopped my onion already, and I'm gonna put chopped onion about a half a cup on top of this one and that one. Simple. Often when I cook, I have a mixture of, of course, kosher salt and black pepper already mixed, so I don't have to do it separately. I'm going to use that one this time. Just basically dust the pears and the onions on top. I like to cook with a vignette, which I find it more of a neutral flavor, very aromatic, especially with the pears. A lot of different beignets have a pear-like or honeysuckle aroma, even though they don't have a sweet flavor. If you do like a sweet, sweet flavored wine and want a sweeter flavored sauce, you can do it with a Riesling. It will be fine. My preference is just using a vignette. There are several available now in Cal from California. Several years ago, it was only in France you could get this. But in the last several years, it's became very popular, especially with some of the food and wine magazines out there now. Most Americans are familiar with it now. It's available in most areas. Often still, there only have maybe two available. Uh, any one that you want to use is fine. This one today is also, it's a South Australia. So, waiting for the movie to start. It won't be long now, just one more ad. This ad for Australia's oldest family-owned winery, Yolumba. You know, the talk, eat, live, laugh, share, you lumber, you lumber. The ad? Now, the movie. Oh, and I know the ending. I keep an eye on the guy with the hat. I cook with rancher charcoal because it has a low ash point. When I cook in a competition in my large smoker where I can cook about 250 pounds of meat, I can cook a whole competition, which is almost 20 hours of cooking by the time the end of combination competition with one bag. And the expense of that is great. There's you know one bag and no ash, which means easier cleanup. So traditionally, I use this on just about everything that I cook. Because when I have to clean out this grill when this is done, I'm going to have basically a dustpan full of ash versus if I use some of the other brands, I have to have a bucket. I find it burns very, very even as well as clean. And the size is 18 pounds, and it's easy enough for me to lift. Now for the corp one on the grill. My coals are hot and ready to go. Spread them out a little bit. Do we spread out the coals? We'll sit it right in the center of the grill. And as the pears cook down, they will baste the meat and infuse the flavor into the meat. 
and that will eventually become the sauce. So we're going to put the lid on it, adjust it, and now we can walk away. We'll be right back and we'll do the dessert on the grill. Our dessert and I'm going to make my version of bananas foster served over grilled pineapple so the entire dessert will be done on the grill the only items that you need is a nice fresh stalled pineapple stalled banana and because I'm southern I love pecans and I've went ahead and pre-chopped pretty fine some pecan if you have a preference in the area you live in and you prefer walnut or almond you can use those for the dessert too. I just prefer pecan. The last ingredient you will need is rum. Captain Morgan's either coconut or Captain Morgan's spice. Either one that you prefer is great with this dessert. Today I'm going to use spice. If you get into a pinch, you can go to your local grocery store and often find pineapples already cut for you, but usually they're about $2 more, at least in my area. So the easiest way to cut a pineapple is I take off the top and save that for the kids to grow or put it in your compost pile like I do. Cut off the bottom. And then you're going to cut down the sides. I think I'm going to switch to a serrated knife to make it a little bit easier. Straight down, and all you do is turn as you go. Easy enough. I'm going to slice it in about three quarters of an inch slices, which is a great serving for a large dessert. If you want it smaller, I would cut it in half for a smaller portion dessert. Reason being is when you cook, cut it too thin on the grill, it loses some of its texture. So let's see how many servings I can After you've sliced your pineapple on about one inch pieces, uh, my expensive culinary tool that I love is your favorite tomato paste can. It cuts out the core perfectly without too much waste. I also use these for biscuits. If you, if you want to use little small tea cake biscuits. There you go. This is the hard core. And this is the perfect part for your grill. Plenty thick enough not to get fall through your grill and to keep a nice texture.
It's not something that you can do in advance. But bananas are easy enough to slice. What we do here at FCI is give you a great foundation to go out and, and build a career in this industry. Our culinary career program is 600 hours and it covers everything. It starts you at level one where it teaches you the basics. A lot of French terminology, it's all kind of thrown at you in the first level, but you pick it up very quickly. I didn't know that I could learn so much in such a short period of time. Say first day you cook some carrots, the second day you're cooking carrots that go into this. And so you're building your skills and that continues into level two. They kind of teach you how to perfect those things so that your food is consistent. You learn something new every day in terms of like what foods might go with what, plating ideas. As you move up, you start getting more exposure to various cooking methods. It's so important for us. Look how pretty. All right, you see the bananas are starting to saute. Butter's almost melted. And again, as soon as this butter gets melted, we're gonna add the pecans. I don't have an exact measurement on pecans, it just depends on how much you like. For four people, let's just say handful. Perfect. As the pecans toast in the butter, they'll get a nice, toasty flavor. No other seasonings are needed. And you can see now why I have to leave the bananas at least a quarter inch thick, because they'll break down easily and you'll just get a banana mush. We're not making banana sauce. We're making banana softer. All right, I'm going to turn this off. Okay. Is that a Now the bananas are starting to smell really, really good, and you smell the flavor of the nuts getting toasted. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of Captain Morgan. Home cooks get a little scared of this. Since we're outside, we've got some wind. We can flame it, which is the fun part of being a chef. Again, I paid 30 grand to learn that. <laughs> and that will burn the alcohol off and also make the sauce. If you want to have fun, you can add a little more and flame it again. But normally, a couple ounces is enough. We're going to set the pineapple ring right in the middle of your plate or bowl, whatever you choose to serve it in. And we're going to top it with vanilla ice cream. The other option is if you have some pound cake or angel food cake, you can actually put a cube on top. We're going to stick with ice cream today because it's about 92 outside. I'm 
a southern girl and Mayfield's ice cream is very, very popular here and this is what I grew up eating. So one scoop right in the center. Look at that. That's perfect inside the hole in the center from my can. Simple, but pretty. Get that smoke. And then we're going to top it, roll tight, we're going to top it with our bananas and nuts. And I'm so glad it's dessert time because I love this. Look what I said, half a banana per person. Isn't that perfect? If your bananas are larger, they'll just have a little bit bigger shape. And we're ready to eat some dessert now. Yum. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Since we have our pork loin in the oven and the other one on the grill, Next, we'll come back and we'll work on the salad. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, y'all. Roll Tide, Margaret. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Get sauce. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. It's such an honor. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Yep. Y'all don't even know he was a virgin until he's 28 and now. Roll Tide. Woo! Hi, Mary and Daisy. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. You will always be remembered. Roll Tide. When I make my green goddess dressing, I prefer Brightstone sour cream. If it comes in a light or a regular, I think it has the creamiest texture and the smoothest feel on your mouth. And my rendition of the grit. Green goddess dressing that was popular when I was a little girl, but it doesn't come in a jar. Very simple to make, and you probably have most of the ingredients on hand. This should make enough for four nice sized salads. Yeah, I have three tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of fresh garlic. Mmm. I again like to use my mixture of salt and pepper that's already blended 50-50. A peach. My break stone that I love. Three tablespoons. Next, we're going to peel two avocados and dice them and put them in our immersion blender cup. And we're almost ready for salad time. The lemon will prevent it from turning, so if you want to refrigerate this for a couple hours, there's no problem with that. Overnight, normally not so good, but a couple hours is no problem. So we're going to, you can probably see from the show, I use a lot of different knives. I prefer my Cutco sandwich spreader for doing my avocados. I actually use in order to, to chop up the avocado easily, you just go around in a circle and you see how easy 
the serration goes around. Twist it and then you can see the inside. Put my immersion blender in and turn it on. I'm just going to continue mixing it until it gets the consistency that I like. Now for my secret ingredient, a little bit of buttermilk. See the dressing coming together. And there you have it. Green goddess dressing from scratch in about five minutes. Another reason why I love my pet coat not. Here's a couple of things America got right. Cars and freedom. This is a little trick that I do.
do this on a gas grill. You can do this in the oven or you can do it on a charcoal grill. Ready to roll. Our veggie bundles are done. This is the pork loin off of the grill, so it has a little bit of a darker char. I've removed the drippings and the pears from it, which we will use as a sauce snack over the pork.